everybody welcome to on podcast the on microsoft podcast the only podcast from microsoft where we talk about microsoft things on a podcast i think i was able to squeeze in <laughs> was that five or six i want to try and get up to like 25 variations of podcast microsoft and on uh in like the first minute and a half so i'm working on it folks i'm working on it uh, I'm the your more host. ons the better the more ons, the more pods, the more Microsoft. Uh, <laughs> I'm your host, Kareem Anderson. I'm joined with the world's greatest co-host today. Riff Backus. Yeah, and uh, as usual, every week we come to you with more Microsoft news. So we're going to jump right into it and get to the rundown. Do you want to lead us off? Yeah, sure. Um, I'm here to talk about the big news, or the big not news, depending on how you look at it, which is <laughs> Panos Panay teasing the next generation of Windows. He had a fireside chat at Ignite 2021, and he had a little bit of slip of the tongue, and he said he was pumped for the next generation of Windows. So we'll just recap that um, fireside segment and get into what the next generation of Windows could possibly be. Uh, and then I will follow up with just the overall recap, which was a deluge of news. Um, <laughs> we got all kinds of stuff. We got stuff about Mesh. We got stuff about IT security and cloud stuff. So we're going to kind of jump into that and kind of pull apart some things. There were some tidbits about uh, Microsoft changing code bases for Edge, uh, you know, unifying the, the two, which I, for some reason I thought that was already a thing. But hey, <laughs> um, you know, Microsoft likes to complicate things. And then you mentioned Edge, and that is also our third topic because Microsoft rolled out Edge version 89, which comes with some nice features that you guys might want to hear about. Yeah, Edge is is, uh, is, is coming up with features. I think it's second uh, behind Teams when it comes to feature sets uh, with Windows lagging behind. Uh, speaking of Windows, um, that will be part of our Week Ahead section where we'll be talking about uh, Sun Valley stuff. So, you know, like we said, you know, hopefully features start to creep into uh, Windows soon, and we'll be have some we'll have some stuff to talk about. Um, we are there's also something about uh, you want to do about hardware as well. Yeah, um, I picked up a Google Pixel Slate, and um, the reason why <laughs> the reason why I got it was because I was curious about their tablet mode that um, Google has on their devices. So I'm just gonna do a piece in the week ahead about. Chrome OS tablet mode versus Windows 10 tablet mode and lessons learned or lessons gained for both Microsoft and Google. But and we got some late breaking news that we'll talk about as well, which uh, includes uh, Microsoft almost, I mean, potentially about to lose their data contract a year later. Uh, we'll get into a little bit about that and then, you know, we'll, we'll obviously dive into it more during the week. And uh, we had a hack, another hack of Microsoft uh, Exchange, I believe, Server Exchange. So um, we'll see how devastating that is as well. And you also have some hardware that you want to talk about too. I do. Um, I want to talk about the ThinkPad. I got a ThinkPad, another one. Uh, but this is the long-awaited Surface Pro Surface competitor uh, device. So we'll talk about that as well. And uh, for you guys who entered our Aki giveaway, we do have two winners to announce. Um, one of them is Joseph D, and the other one is Stover M. Um, I reached out to you via your email address, so uh, keep an eye for that email and be sure to get back to us with your mailing address so we could talk to our partners at Aki and get you set up with the delivery so you could enjoy the new TP EPT31 earbuds right away. Rolling right off the tongue with all those letters <laughs> and numbers. <laughs> And uh, speaking of rolling right off the tongue, something that I don't want to hold back anymore is Panos Panay teasing the next generation of Windows and hinting about it being a massive year for Windows. So um, if you guys were following Ignite, um, Panos had a fireside chat with Azure Edge and platform CVP Ro Roanne Sones, if I'm not saying her name wrong. If I am, I'm sorry. Um, he basically talked about how Windows is being used for modern work, but the majority of the talk was about Windows as it is, and he didn't really sp speak much about where Windows is going, but he had an interesting quote around towards the ending of his fireside chat where Panos remarked, look, I have not talked about the next generation of Windows and what's coming next, but I can tell you that I am so pumped. Now, this is the first time in a while 
that Thanos has come out and acknowledged anything next generation with Windows. So far, they've only talked about uh, 21H1, which is the major update for Windows 10 this year. So I'm wondering when he what when he's saying next generation of Windows, what could he be talking about? Is it Windows 10 Sun Valley or is it Windows 10X? What are, what are your thoughts? Uh, I have two issues with with Panos right now, and the first one is that it wasn't a fireside chat because there was no fire, <laughs> and there wasn't a really really a chat. This was a digital, and you know, what was worse was that there was no background. He was in a completely <laughs> opaque white room. With, uh, with, which a Bing, inv- with a Bing yeah. scorecard that he was yeah. tape, um, peeling tape off of. Exactly. I think fireside chat, I think, you know, smoking jacket and nice lounging chair and a fire. <laughs> but anyway, beyond that, uh, the other issue I have with this is that, you know, it's it's not indicative of Panos' excitement, but he's always pumped about everything. Uh, that just seems to be his natural state of being is, is pumped. Uh, I don't know how this guy... <laughs> you know, gets excited about anything beyond that. But uh, I think when he says next generation, I I, I want to say it's a reference to anything that he's now in control of. I think he's going to call any progress made beyond his uh, change in title and his change of position, which was, I believe, last year is when he took over, or a little, or was it the year before? 2000, the end of 2019, yeah. 2019, I believe. He uh, was given the reins of Windows. Obviously, we had a crazy 2020, so we'll just shelve that as the year that didn't exist. Uh, but I believe the Windows team has been working really hard on on bringing some stuff forward. So since 2019, I think anything that's going forward, he will just call next-gen Windows. Uh, I don't believe it's uh, anything about Windows 10X in particular, because um, unless he's seen code that no one else has seen, and <laughs> by that I mean Rafael Rivera, who's very good at finding code, um, there isn't really much to Windows 10X as is. Um, and I don't foresee that being his his uh, his stage to like you know uh, kind of showcase. I think what he's going to do is he's going to showcase Sun Valley on these new Surface devices, like a Surface Laptop Four, which you wrote about um, last week, I believe. Last week, yeah. Um, the Surface Pro Eight, uh, whatever version of that that comes in, and maybe a Surface Go Two. I believe those things are all going to be having Windows Ten um, with Sun Valley on it. As you know, as we mentioned, and we continue to say over and over, the theory is that Windows 10X is going to be on commercial devices, uh, which means devices that um, are already in businesses, um, uh, already at school, so they're just going to get flashed a new version of this Windows 10X, um, I believe, uh, or they're going to start shipping with devices to them, but they're not going to be marketed to us. We're not going to see them on TV. We're not going to see them on the sidelines at the during the NFL games, anything like that. Those devices will be... Um, seated to smaller markets. So I don't think he's going to be super pumped about that version he can't really sell to versus this, you know, the version we're going to see, the, the stuff he's, you know, usually associated with as far as laptops and detachables and all those things. So if I had to bank on it, I think he's excited and pumped about the design, the consistency, um, the language, uh, the iconography of Windows 10 with Sun Valley is what he's considering next gen. But he did point the, like you're saying, he pointed the conversation back to the current state of Windows 10. And he said, he hinted that now isn't like really the best time to talk about what's next for Windows. I mean, I saw Tom Warren tweeting about how a Windows event could be coming later this month. So I'm pretty sure maybe later (coughs) on. (laughs) Bill, I think he's just talking about Bill. Maybe later on, he'll end up talking about uh, the future of Windows. But obviously, Ignite is for IT pros and developers and Azure and cloud and Microsoft 365. So we never expected a big Windows 10 Sun Valley or a big Windows 10X announcement at, at Ignite itself. But he did also have another interesting quote towards the, again, towards the ending of his fireside chat in quotes, pun intended. We're not talking about that today, and I totally get it, because we have so much right now. I know that the future of Windows is incredible, what we're bringing to the table for sure, but ultimately we're here today to talk about Windows 10. That's what he said when Joe Anna asked him about the about the current state of Windows and his favorite hardware and blah, blah, blah. And then towards the ending of the segment, when they were doing their outro and he was getting ready to leave, he's like, it's going to be a massive year. It's going to be a massive year. Thank you. Thank you. So is it going to be a massive year? 
Yeah, um, I think they're going to have um, an update to the Surface Duo, uh, hopefully with better support than they did for this first one. Um, you know, I, I, I know you, amongst other people, and a lot of other people who bought Duos, were not only excited about the prospect, but were, you know, I guess equally frustrated about the, the level of updates and support. So hopefully that gets uh, patched. But, I mean, we also think chronologically, like Windows 10 with Sun Valley is probably further ahead the Windows 10X. 10X, yeah. So, I mean, he's probably going to lead in this fall with, you know, here's all the new design and feature sets for Windows 10. And guess what, folks? We also have Windows 10X on the horizon, and that will also get a lot of that design language and push. We had to test it out on um, on the dual architecture screen. that's our dual yeah, screen. We, have- we did test that Windows 10X new features on a system that, you know, already has all the the um not to say for like lack of a better term, legacy, but all the stuff that we need to, and we're gonna ship, you know, sort that out and sift it out, and then send it over to Windows 10X. Versus here's Windows 10X, and here's <laughs> Windows 10. Try and figure out which one you want to buy. It's more, I think, the the way that he's gonna picture or position this is, look at all the cool new stuff in Windows 10, and we have this new operating system on the horizon, and we'll start pulling that stuff, all the stuff that you guys want, the things that you guys are giving us feedback on, things that we know enterprise needs. And we'll sort over here and, you know, stay on the stay tuned for that kind of stuff. So it's going to be a big year. I think they have, you know, we have two new two devices that are, uh, I think, pretty big, pretty decent sellers for them when the Surface Pro 8, uh, if and when that comes out, uh, Surface Laptop 4 and, you know, giving very uh, multiple configurations for people, uh, hopefully some swappable SDs like they did for the uh, Surface Pro uh, 7 Plus, you know, those are big things for people. Uh, AMD options are, are big. Starting off with eight gigabytes of RAM right off the bat is also big. These are just, you know, small victories that he can claim right off the bat that make a big difference in people's lives versus, you know, swinging for the fences and, you know, potentially missing and, you know, him being labeled, you know, oh, this this guy couldn't do, couldn't fix Windows. <laughs> well, that was just one thing that happened at Ignite 2021. For most people, that was probably the biggest story because we're, People are consumers and they're interested in Windows, but something that people are, are all also interested in is Teams. And there was a lot of Teams news at Ignite. Yeah, uh, just to be clear, uh, we're excited about the Windows stuff. The people that were attending Ignite, maybe not so much, which is why his fireside <laughs> section was like, I want to say like, what was it nine, 10 minutes or something like that? Adam. It was only 15 minutes and it wasn't even at Ignite. Like it was, <laughs> well, there was no Ignite because it was all virtual, but it was pre-recorded. Yeah. Like he wasn't live in the studio like all the other segments were. But what people came for, obviously, is all the team stuff. And so uh, here are some of the features, just kind of a quick rundown. I mean, there, um, I believe you can go on YouTube and see the live streams or the recorded streams now. Um, which I believe are like two hours a piece or something like that, two separate videos. 11 hours of day one and then another 12 hours for day two. So if you missed anything, you could just scroll through and look at the preview and see what they're talking about, whether it's Teams, Azure, Microsoft 365, or even Windows or the Panos, Panay segment that we just talked about. But just, again, if you don't want to do that, listen to us. And we'll tell you that here's some of the features. the first of those are improvements for live events and teams, where teams can now be used to create interactive webinars for up to a thousand attendees. Um, that's big, you know. Uh, it's, you know, just again, we used to. I believe this time last year, everyone was complaining about the uh, forty-five minute limit on uh, Zoom and the amount of people that <laughs> could be invited. This, you know, year later is is upping the ante. Uh, team live events uh, will also support webinars with up to twenty thousand attendees. That's scheduled for. Uh, later this month. So right now you can test out a thousand if you aren't already doing that. Uh, and Microsoft wants to give you support for twenty. I don't know. I don't think that's even a meeting at that point. That's like a concert, small concert, or something like that. But <laughs> if you are an indie artist, that's also great. Uh, PowerPoint Live is now generally available in Teams. The feature uh, combines slides, notes, meetings in the chat, uh, in a, into a single view to help uh, presenters uh, to make pre- presentations easier. Uh, for speakers and presenters so you get a bunch of uh new features all in a single window uh so you're not you know jumping back and forth between tabs and telling people to hold on a second or trying to uh hide certain things you're not supposed to be showing during a presentation Uh, that's always uh, great we also uh, great 
we also have uh, dynamic view for teams meetings, uh, which should be coming. They they believe said next month. Um, so look for that at the you know probably start rolling out and testing at the end of this month, uh, more so uh, at the beginning of April. Um, this team is getting improved security uh, thanks to invite only meeting controls. Also coming um, is Indian encryption uh, one to one cost. This is big, um, you know, obviously for businesses uh, with sensitive information. Uh, this is probably one of the things that was holding a few back from using Teams, uh, which shouldn't be the issue now. You have encrypted uh, one to one calls uh, for you know those executives uh, or IT people. Um, it's also becoming possible to share channels outside of an organization through a feature known as Microsoft Teams Connect. So uh, again, they're just opening up the barrier to entry for some people to make sure that they get as much adoption and a much an easier use. Um, so you're not, you know, saying like, oh, well, you don't have a Skype ID. Guess we can't talk. This thing oh. is kind of allowing people to, uh, you know, give you information, uh, grant you the access to give it to them uh, outside and of that. This Microsoft. is something that Slack had for a while. So it's good yes. to see that Teams is also getting this now. Yeah, I mean, to a degree, too, because I mean, uh, I've been, you know, we've been reading over the past couple of years about how Slack is kind of uh slowed down productivity ironically because people were so like free to just share information and kind of jump into different channels about all kinds of random things that have nothing to do with work so we'll see if this you know this kind of allowance takes a hit for productivity ironically uh, microsoft list is also getting custom list templates in teams as well as rich text uh test uh, text editors the ability to add uh, comments or mentions uh and create rules and other new features um what we've written about all of those details and some of those uh, additional features. So just check out the website. Um, is Ravi, I believe is her name. She is like, or or um, yeah. She is our like Teams guru. So, you know, just type in her name and I'm sure you just get <laughs> a library of Teams information that you need. Uh, the new polling experience in Teams uh, meetings is uh, now on mobile as well. Uh, and so that's just some of the team stuff that was uh, mentioned during Ignite. And uh, Teams, uh, there was also one thing that I believe you skipped over is uh, Microsoft Dynamics is getting a seamless mm. integration with Teams. Yes. And um, that's all the Teams news for now. Um, probably will be some more throughout the week next week. So be sure to stay tuned to us for all your Teams news. But now it's time to talk about Outlook Board, which is another new feature that Microsoft announced at Ignite. So this new feature is designed to help make your calendar easier to manage. The feature is now available for everyone and has a free form view, which combines your calendars, your files, and your reminders and to-do lists in all in one place. So basically Microsoft is making it easier to manage your calendar. So you don't have to go all over clicking through different menus to see all the important stuff for work and even for your personal life. And in addition to Outlook Board, Microsoft also rolled out what they're calling suggested times in Outlook for iOS and Android. That feature is all about AI and finding times for meetings. And then if you're on a Mac, uh, remember last year at Ignite, they announced the redesigned um, Outlook for Mac client. Well, now Outlook on Mac is getting support for more Outlook for more account types and for shared calendars. So. That is the bulk of the Outlook and the Teams news, but something that a lot of other people were impressed about was Microsoft Mesh. And I know you are you like this kind of new stuff, so why don't you take it away? Yeah, this is probably what got uh, mainstream media attention. Uh, if you were like looking at CN, uh, CNBC or uh, Forbes News, things like that, uh, was this Alex Kipman presentation of Microsoft's apparently renewed invig or invigorated uh, push into AR and VR, the mixed reality. Um, what they're introducing now is called Microsoft Mesh, which is, um, again, we said like the biggest news coming out of it because it took, what was it, I don't know, 45 minutes to an hour presentation uh, yep. where you get to be underwater and use, you know, avatars, things like that. Basically what it is is the next generation of uh, conference meetings uh, via um, Microsoft's HoloLens uh, or its mixed reality technology. And, you know, you can obviously use that with any type of headset that supports that. Um, but it's, you know, again, it's nice to see that Microsoft, you know, isn't just 
kind of shoveling um, HoloLens off to enterprise and not giving us any information about this. This is more combining uh, its you know passion for mixed reality with this new push for Teams. Uh, there's a lot of Teams stuff that's mixed into this. Uh, just for some of the details uh, the, or the more unique parts, um, Mesh is designed for companies and businesses to let their teams uh, join shared virtual spaces for, for collaborative meetings uh, where everyone will appear as virtual avatars. Uh, Microsoft, I believe, when they first started talking about HoloLens, they, talk, they also mentioned HoloDeck, uh, I believe, which is a Star Trek reference. Uh, don't kill me if I got that. I think that I think it's right. Where they wanted to be able to tel uh, uh, teleport um, uh, people into meetings. Uh, and they wanted to do this with, you know, photorealistic kind of imagery. Uh, the HoloLens technology isn't quite there yet. We're a few years off in that. So what they're doing is they're doing what everyone loves, avatars, uh, a cuter version of yourself in a virtual space. Uh, Alex Tippmann used a photorealistic version, but um, well, I think we're going to be starting off with more of, you know, what you would expect from um, like your um, Xbox um, avatar kind of, you know, similar or facsimile of, your, of yourself. Um, the target audience is enterprise and commercial users. Um, so unfortunately, we're hopefully this technology will trickle down to where we'll be using something like this to host this podcast or, <laughs> or you know, be in a meeting. Uh, we'll be able to do that. And people won't have to look at our weird backgrounds. They'll be able to see this <laughs> other, you know, maybe a, a coliseum or something. We're all kind of enjoying the same space. Um, Mesh is uh, coming as a HoloLens app. But it can also be uh, accessed through new versions of Altspace VR, which is Microsoft's VR platform. Um, Alex Kipman detailed that the solutions built through Mesh by developers could come to Windows Mixed Reality, PCs, Macs as well, smartphones, and Oculus too at some point. Because uh, I know that uh, they do some partnerships with, obviously, anybody who's willing to support Windows 10 Mixed Reality um, uh, platform. Uh, like I said, it's big. Um, it's still commercial based. Um, it's interesting to see, again, we're hoping that this kind of stuff gets funneled into maybe, what is your headset again that you had? The Samsung? Samsung HMD Odyssey Plus. <laughs> Sweet name, Samsung. <laughs> yeah. um, that people will be able to pick up some of those for, you know, hopefully two, 300 bucks and get this experience versus spending $3,000, $3,500 on a developer kit to, you know, for research or something like that. Uh, he did have plenty of examples. Like I said, we, they, he had this whole underground or underwater scenario. Um, he showed during the presentation how mesh can be used for research, uh, for medical uh, medical research, medical participation, uh, how it can be used to, uh, again, one of the biggest showings is to help support uh, manufacturing. Um, so there were all those examples. I would highly recommend seeing it. Like I said, it's about an hour long, maybe a little shorter than that. But he goes through many different scenarios, uh, how it can be used in education. Um, so again, just think of this isn't quite what uh, Facebook has, where they're kind of create a virtual world um, where you can then jump your avatar in and out of and participate in like kind of a second life situation. This isn't quite that. This is more creating um, just a virtual room to have a meeting um, uh, and you can kind of fill it with, with whatever you need to for that specific meeting. Uh, so less um, second life, more elaborate Zoom <laughs> meeting, I guess, Teams meeting. I'm pretty sure one day, like, we'll both end up wearing HoloLens 2 headsets and uh, have this podcast in virtual reality instead of through a 2D screen in Teams. Well, that's the idea that we could create, you know, we could have it uh at the beach somewhere and invite anybody who's listening to kind of sit in and we can all be there and again we won't be necessarily confined i think it's i think it's also really a, a really cool way to kind of um bridge the acceptance and gap between vr and ar because right um you know vr is a very uh immersive experience um and it's hard to see how people can do use vr for more than just consumption because it's so immersive and AR is, you know, more, uh, it's also good. You can also consume information, but you know, you're usually doing something uh, as you're, you know, uh, looking in VR. So Microsoft is basically allowing people to create an immersive meeting area 
while still having you know visuals outside of uh, of VR. So um, again, I think this is a big step if people start to adopt this version of of VR, so to speak, VR Lite. It's just one more. It's just one more step to to AR. And um, I believe the other thing they were talking big about was uh, what were the uh, I referenced them as anchors, but it was the digital or the virtual anchors that they wanted to place around the world so that you could create um, um, AR experiences that last outside of your meeting. So uh, if you were to drop uh, a meeting area, you know, um, in your office, anything that you did or left there, uh, you could, you know, reference that and go back to it and you wouldn't have to recreate it all over again. So uh, they want to be able to allow developers and uh, IT guys to kind of create these, uh, I forget, I'm drawing a blank for the name off, I apologize, maybe I can find it in the notes, but it's basically a digital anchor to like place digital objects in the real world and have them stay there. And they're creating a whole network of that, a quote unquote mesh network. Uh, and they're working with other uh, partners to, to work alongside that. I believe Google's doing something very similar as well. Uh, all in all, it's some pretty impressive technology, uh, which we look forward to. Hopefully, we might be able to try it out. I know I yeah. saw our old friend, uh, Sean, uh, Sean Ong. Uh, I'm sorry if I'm saying his name wrong, but um, he was um, tweeting about it just before we started filming. And it looked pretty cool because, like you're saying, he's able to combine his real world and put objects into his real world and see people in his real world. And it's not a virtual world because he has a HoloLens headset on. It's pretty mind blowing thing, a mind blowing thing. And I'm hoping that we would be able to experience it one way or another sometime in the future. But for now, um, we have to move on to our other stories coming out of Ignite. Um, the biggest other story was Power Autom Automate. Automate or Automate? I think it's Power Automate. It's becoming Automate, free. Yeah free for Windows 10 users. The tool comes with 370 pre-built actions, which will help you build flows across different applications. I believe one of our new writers, Benjamin, he explained it as, it enables you to build your own scripts to automate time-consuming repetitive tasks. So um, that's a big story. And then also related to Power Platform is PowerFX, which is Microsoft's first low-code programming language. They announced new AI capabilities for Power Virtual Agents and also updates for Power BI Premium and Power Automate Desktop 2. Again, these are all usually big topics coming out of Ignite. And then finally, the last topic was uh, Azure Precept, which Microsoft, which Microsoft is calling a new hardware and software platform to make it easier for their customers to develop AI solutions. So that was the bulk of Ignite 2020. Um, you could check out on Microsoft.com. We have a, an Ignite 2020 hub where you could read all of our news stories and all of our features if you missed anything from Ignite last week. And now I'll hand, hand it off to you to talk about Edge version 89, which was announced on Friday. Yeah, this is something that is near and dear to anybody who's listening, uh, something that's tangible. And then we talked about a bunch of stuff coming soon and hinted <laughs> at and rumored about. This is something that you can actually play with right now, uh, which is uh, Edge version 89. I've been using this version for actually quite some time because I'm on the uh, dev and canary versions of Edge, but it comes with uh, dun -dun -dun, vertical tabs, uh, which is one of the biggest upfront uh, new features for this. Obviously, it comes with a bunch of other smaller things, but first thing that you can try and try out is vertical tabs. And I've been doing it, trying it, trying it out recently uh, for the last day and a half or two. I tried it out when it was first introduced in the Canary uh, release, and it, it takes some getting used to. Um, but what it does essentially for me is get rid of some of that Chrome at the top. Yeah, from, right. Yeah. Um, that, that allows a more a slightly more immersive web uh, web reading experience makes anything that you create as a uh, web app sort of feel like more of an app because you're not seeing all of these tabs and stuff um, at the very top of the, of the thing. Um, it also kind of allows you to have a slider uh, so you can you know dip in and out of the tabbed experience at your own at your own free uh, free will. Um, it also makes it easier to manage your history, which is another big thing uh, coming to uh, Edge version 89 uh, with a new drop down menu that would appear above your current web page. Um, a lot of things that they are starting to do with Edge is starting to pull out some of the 
hidden UI uh, that we used to have. Uh, you would have to kind of dig into settings, dig into uh, favorites, dig into collections, dig into downloads. Downloads is another thing um, that uh, will be coming, I believe, uh, in the next build, if not already here. Um, the other thing you'll be able to do is pin the, the history menus to the right side of the page by clicking the pin icon or using the keyboard shortcut control plus H. Uh, so, you know, you can, for power users, you don't have to move your mouse nearly as much anymore. Uh, this feature is actually inspired by the hub experience from the legacy edge and the edge team is now bringing it back to the new Chromium based edge after listening to users feedback. Um, after Microsoft finally enabled History Sync in Microsoft Edge, the History menu can also display open tabs from other devices, which is kind of cool. You know, we're getting that uh, History Sync uh, that people really crave and is one of the big, um, I believe, drawbacks for some uh, people uh, when they first started testing Edge was being able to bring out, you know, they were comparing it to Chrome, like, oh, I want to be able to <laughs> bring all the stuff Chrome brought over. And it, Edge developers are like, we're doing it, just give us a second. Uh, this is finally starting to come to fruition. Uh, let's see. The Edge team um, is not uh, done making the web browser more efficient. Uh, version 89 will introduce a new startup boost feature that will make the browser start faster after a reboot, which is... 41% faster, to be exact. Yeah, 41% faster. I don't know how they got that number or what the measure it is, but it is notably faster. Uh, you may only see... 20%, who knows, but it is definitely noticeably faster for the startup. Um, and this is, I think that they said, oh, it's improvement from 29%. So from 29% to 41%, uh, Benzer uh, said adding uh, that startup boost will be enabled automatically later this month. So again, I've been using it for Canary. Uh, I can tell you that it does make a difference, um, especially because in Canary, you're constantly updating each day. Um, so, uh, you know, I have to p pick a time where it takes you about 15 to 20 seconds to update and get some new features or just, you know, get whatever's coming out of the Canary channel. And it's uh, pretty awesome to kind of get back into the flow of things without having to, you know, take minutes at a time. Um, they also announced some new stuff for Bing as well, which um, they threw it in with the blog post, which announced Edge 89, but they, oh, yeah. the, the, Bing, imagery, the Bing right? stuff is not really related to Edge because you could get to Bing on any other browser, but I wrote about it and it was like uh, kind of making Bing more, more fancy looking. They have more carousels, they have informative cards, and it's, it's focused on making Bing more interactive uh, compared to just looking like a, at a search page with just links. Yeah, um, and this is this is a reference to the image stuff too, right? I think I yeah. was, I was, uh, I wish you could have seen our chat uh, last week. I was, I was in the Canary uh, channel, and I believe that they were fixing some stuff um, in order to bring this new image experience. But while I, and again, please sound off if you were experiencing the same thing. It would seem really broken. It was this weird, ugly mesh of image search, and it was feature stripped. <laughs> and I was, I was railing about it. I was like, "Oh, this is what is Microsoft doing? Taking steps back?" And you know, our uh, editor in chief was like, "Just calm down. Like, you know, we'll see what they roll out." And they rolled out this amazing, um, uh, immersive uh, image search, which you know, just not just image search, but it's also um, as uh, uh, Arif was saying. Um, again, you get your cooking times, you, you get your ingredients, all that stuff within the page itself. Uh, and if you're looking for uh, a way to plate it uh, and a specific look for it, you can do the image search and get all that same information in the image view as well. So you're having to do less clicks uh, and it just seems more intuitive. So um, it's pretty awesome. And you know, as we know, both Google and Bing like to uh, share with each other features. So I expect <laughs> to see something like this in Google's research as well, uh, coming soon. And that does it for our list of topics for the day, which means it's time for the week ahead. And I'll let you get started with your fancy smancy new hardware. Yeah. Um, like I said, I have, uh, I believe it's called the ThinkPad X1 um, detachable. Is that what it is? Is that the term for it? I believe so. If not, I will have an impressions with the uh, exact term for it. 
But this is Lenovo's... Um, Surface clone, right? Surface clone. I believe the last time they had a Surface 1 or a Surface like this was 2017, I believe. And it, and this, I mean this by saying in the U.S. I know that there's an international version that kind of came out last uh, last year, last March, I believe. But um, it wasn't being sold in the U- uh, U.S. The last time that the U.S. had one was in 2017, I believe it was the Mix 720 or something like that. Uh, which was a 10 inch version Uh, this is a 13 inch it has smaller bezels it's got a great uh, exterior camera Uh, it's using the intel i believe you can see that there uh iris well it's the evo platform with the uh integrated iris xe graphics um it's a core i5 it is lightning fast uh i've had it for like i said about 18 hours um haven't had to charge a battery but again i've only been uploaded or updating uh just got my suite of applications on there, so I'll be playing with it. But I'll have a first impressions uh, for that and comparing it to the King, the Surface, Surface Pro, Pro 7, 7 Plus. Plus. Um, let's see how these go head to head. And um, other than that, we also have some news to share about Microsoft's hack, apparently. Yes, uh, Microsoft. Server Exchange was uh, hacked, uh, and I want—I don't want to say once again because, uh, according to details, this has been going on since January sixth, you know, right around the Capitol riots time. So, and um, Microsoft is so far, and uh, with this preliminary investigation saying that this is another state-sponsored hack uh, coming out of China. Uh, I don't know if they have a group to associate it with just yet. Um, but, you know, news came, I believe, broke late Thursday is when you said to me about them patching this. Um, you know, people are comparing this to SolarWinds. In the scale and magnitude, it's not. Um, and the outcome is, is slightly different. But it is a, a server hack. Uh, Microsoft also came out saying that this is for on-premise devices, uh, on-premise servers. So uh, they are saying that they're... Uh, cloud exchange uh, stuff hasn't been uh, affected yet. Obviously, we're going to need more information about this. Um, so you know, keep an eye on that. We'll be writing about this. I will be writing about this. Uh, Microsoft will be answering to about this, uh, I'm assuming, coming up this week. <laughs> and you mentioned your hardware review, and I have my own, well, not really a hardware review because the Pixel Slate is what three years old now, but it's kind of, <laughs> kind of technically a a look at the software in Chrome OS and what Google has done with Chrome OS tablet mode and how it compares to the current state of Windows 10 tablet mode and what we know about Windows 10X tablet mode and if Google could learn from Microsoft or if Microsoft could learn from Google because hey, you don't know until you try it, right? Yeah, no, I totally agree. Like, uh, like I said, I I have the Chromebook C thirteenth, another ThinkPad that I wrote about last week, and um, the first thing I said was, it's the operating system is fun. Um, you know, I'm just gonna have to admit that. Like, uh, I'm, a, I'm a Windows fan. Uh, I've used Macs before. Uh, of the three operating systems, Chrome OS is fun. Uh, there are some things that I would like to see change, but um, if Microsoft can start to pull some of these leverage some of these you know um next generation gestures and just paradigms i think windows 10x would be in a really good shape so um that's just one thing they really need to work on is their tablet mode um but windows 10 in its current state um isn't really made for it so hopefully they'll they'll start maybe this is what panels is talking about next next generation (laughs) is tablet mode good old tablet mode from windows 8. And why don't you tell us about this Sun Valley thing? I know you wrote a piece about it because there was a sort of controversy on Twitter about the Microsoft Store getting some touches of Sun Valley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, some publications ran with a story from, I believe, an Italian um, uh, Microsoft-centric site like our, ourselves, where they got uh, a leaked um, GIF of the store getting an update. Um, And again, we're clarifying this by saying the store got an update, not Windows 10. This isn't a new store. Uh, And I don't know if it was maybe a lack of translation or something lost in translation, but with the publications writing about it, they said that Microsoft was getting a new store because from the GIF, which was only five (laughs) seconds, and it just shows some tab, a new tabbed 
like interface, a new drop down, some new highlights, uh, and a circle ring for progress for the updates in the current store. They thought this was a whole new to store store experience. So we, you know, we wrote about uh, just kind of the whole fiasco and how um, I believe is it Brandon Le LeBlanc? Or? LeBlanc, yeah, yeah. He had to come out and say, hey, guys, cool your horses. It's just a minor update, and it should be rolling out, um, I believe, to dev channels now. So, again, most people won't even see this for, for quite some time. Um, and then people were saying, like, oh, well, you know, is this, you know, uh, testing Sun Valley? Is this doing something? He's like, guys, guys, it's <laughs> just a store update. Now, again, in all fairness to anybody who wrote about this, when you see the GIF, which we have it, in our post as well. Uh, it, it is an impressive set of small, minor uh, visual uh, updates to the store. Uh, and if, you know, this is the pace that Microsoft's going at, they're going to need to pick it up. But it is nice to see that uh, store is getting a little love um, and that it is just an update that isn't even going out to everybody yet. So. Yeah, uh, very well said. Uh, nice way to calm down the controversy. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll be getting Sun Valley stuff. And I like I said, I believe we'll be getting a lot of it um, after build. Um, if I had to guess timing, I know that it seems Microsoft pushed it back. Microsoft's always had build sometime in May. Uh, it's just kind of going back to those roots. So build is scheduled for is it the first week of May, uh, something like that. So I expect to see Sun Valley stuff be hinted at or shown during build. We'll start to test it in, from May on through summer and they'll release it in fall. Sounds like a good plan. Yeah, which means Microsoft won't do any of that. Well, that about does it. Uh, we covered a lot of topics. We went to Ignite. We looked at new Outlook features, new Teams features. We teased uh, panels, teasing the next generation of Windows. We announced our, our giveaway winner, and there's a lot. We covered a lot of ground. So I'll leave you for our traditional outro. Yeah, uh, I, Kareem Anderson, will be at uh, Mindhead1 uh, on Twitter if you want to reach out to me. The only one. That's why I put one. Not because I couldn't get in my head. So if that's what you're thinking, it's wrong. Um, yeah, we'd love to hear your comments. Please follow my stories. Uh, I only really tweet about news. So don't worry about politics or anything like that aside. Uh, <laughs> and you can follow uh, uh, RF at... ABAC Jern. Yeah, where he also tweets about all kinds of stuff. I believe is NASCAR on a hiatus right now? Probably not. Not really. Season just nope. started getting <laughs> well, underway. Well, and then there's baseball game. season too. I know Kip is a Mariners fan, so I keep telling him, hey, it's going to be Mariners Mets 2021 World Series. <laughs> <laughs> well, if, you, if you're looking for Nostradamus type predictions in sports, <laughs> you can also follow uh, Eric from Twitter. Uh, we're again, there's uh, on Microsoft, uh, on, Microsoft uh, uh, on Twitter as well for more news, uh, any type of comments or questions, reach out to us about that. We want to bring you as much information as we can, and we want to say thank you for you know spending some time with us again. Yeah, thanks everyone for watching, and we hope to see you again soon. Same place, same time. Stay safe. Wear a mask.